Shalom, Yashorala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Akim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to the few aqua listening in today. Um, so before I get into today's lesson, I just wanted to, you know, give that gentle reminder that today is the Day of Atonement. Okay, currently it's the 5th of September today. But this, uh, this did start from yesterday evening. All right, sunset, which here in the UK, sunset was at um, 7.39. Uh, yesterday evening, September 4th, and um, sunset for Monday evening today will be at 7.37. Okay, so we're fasting, you know, we're doing a dry fast for 24 hours, no food, no water, to atone for our sins for the year in hopes that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai will accept our atonement and forgive us, you know, because we understand that we're in some very trying times. Which, by the way, you can read about in the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 16, verse 29 on down. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into it. You can read about it in your own time because I just wanted to pretty much do a little um, uh, gentle reminder today. All right. So, um, as I said, no food, no water for 24 hours in hopes that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh can, you know, forgive us for our trespasses, our sins. And, um, you know, uh, the best way to use this day is by praying, of course, fasting, staying in the spirit, uh, watching lessons, doing edifying lessons as well, and just, you know, just being in the spirit for the day, man. Okay? This is one of our high holy days. So, you know, Lord willing, um, you know, you all prevail. And, uh, you know, fulfilling this day of atonement today. Um, but anyways, what I wanted to touch on today is, um, you know, life will be hard for you unbelievers. You know, um, you guys are current, you know, those that don't believe in the Lord, you're currently in that mirth spirit. You know, reality hasn't really hit you yet. The penny hasn't really dropped, right? But, um... You see, this time of trouble, this time of tribulation is around the corner. All right. It's not five years from now. It's not 10 years from now. Well, you can't say it's not going to take place in your generation, man, because we're living in that generation right now. All right. I would play this video to you, but I don't want this video to get taken down. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll leave the link to this video in the description and you can watch it in your own time. You can maybe watch it. Before you continue watching this video, it is a, you know, it's just under eight minutes. This is Sky News Australia. And, you know, we've had to turn to many different alternative news outlets because they're not really giving you, um, what's the word? They're not really giving you the full truth here in the UK. All right. They sort of want to paint this image of peace and safety and that everything will be okay. When in reality, things are falling apart, man. Okay, um, Russia cut their Nord Streamline, uh, which basically was a, a, a streamline which um, supplied fuel to countries in Europe. I believe Germany will be affected by it the most. Let me see if I can even search it up right now. Hold on, Russia. Nord Stream 1. And you see, the thing is, that the funny thing about this, right, is that, you know, like the West, America, thought they was uh, doing a good thing by um, throwing all these sanctions on Russia, all right? But really and truly, it's backfired. And now it's back to, you know, the, the, the Western nations into, a, uh, um, into straits, into a time of difficulty. So let's read this title here. Russia to shut down 
Nord Stream gas gas pipeline completely. I haven't read this article, so we're just going to skim through. So it says the uh, Russian gas giant Gazprom will completely shut down the Nord Stream pipeline until the turbine is repaired, even though services were due to resume on Saturday after a maintenance operation. So they, they ain't opening it up, man. They they had their little excuse to shut it down, and then they're just like, you know what, fuck it. We ain't going to open it. All right? No, I just want to skim through this. But just to let you know that it's actually happening, man. And then uh, what's happening is as well is the West is now uh, struggling to um, what's the word to create alternatives here we go alternative um, forms of making energy. All right, but you know ultimately this was all by design, man. None, none of this happened by accident or you know mistake. This is how it's meant to go. All right, because we know that. You know these Edomites are trying to usher in their new world, uh, new world order. All right, the fourth industrial revolution, merging man with machine. All right, adding them, adding man to the um, what's the word? To the internet of of all things, right? And um, you know, giving everyone a UBI, a universal basic income. And ultimately to be perpetual slaves to the elites, man. They want to wipe out the middle class completely and, um, you know, have basically the very poor and the very rich. That's how they're, dis they're distributing this wealth. All right. So let's read this title here. Gas prices likely to hit new highs as Russia shuts pipeline indefinitely. And, you know, there was a video that I saw of... Um, these Italians who were, um, you know, they when they got their, their, their letters for the energy bill, they, they was like, we are not paying that. You know, they protested, they, they, they burnt it, they burnt up the letters, like, hell no. Uh, they, you know, the Italians are taking a stand, man. But, you know, America, and same with the UK as well, you know, the people, the people are pretty much docile, you know. Really and truly, these Americans and these these people living in the UK, they're not really going to do anything <clears throat> until, you know, they can't put food in their belly, until they can't drink no more Coca-Cola, no more fizzy drinks, no more beers, all right, let alone the water. So that's, that's when um, these people are really going to stand up and take a stand. But these other countries around the world, they ain't taking this shit, man. You know, there's uh, uproars of the people, which is prophecy again. That's 2nd Ezra 9, and I believe verse 4. All right. So what does it say? More UK manufacturers are cutting production or making jobs cut, making job cuts as results of out-of-control energy bills. And I've seen some of these energy bills, man. You know, there was one uh, small business. I believe it was a CAF in the UK. And their energy bill for the year is usually about just over two grand. That like it went from just over two grand to 22 grand, 22,000 pounds, man. How the hell are they going to pay that? All right. Let's just skim through this. European prices which have risen by nearly 400% over the past year, owing lower gas flows from Russia, okay, would go up further when markets open on Monday after Moscow scrapped a Saturday deadline for flows to resume through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline to Germany, saying it had discovered a fault during maintenance, which really, this is just, you know, I mean, this, this pipeline has been working so fine all these years, all this time, but now all of a sudden, when all these sanctions are being placed upon Russia, and you know, there's a there's a fight for power and dominance. All of a sudden, this this Nord Stream One pipeline um, um, has has had faults discovered in it, man. You know, it's just excuses, man. And they was meant to open up the pipeline again on Saturday. All right, it is now what? It's Monday, 
the 5th of September, man. They were meant to open it up on the 3rd of, 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 of September, right? So, so what do you think is going to happen, man? You see? Nathan Piper, an oil gas analyst at Invest Tech, said, we are expecting record gas prices across the UK and Europe next week um, as the impact of long-term restrictions of Russia gas supply is absorbed by the market following the indefinite shutdown of the Nord Stream 1 pipeline. So they're expecting these energy prices to be at an all-time high, man. So for all you heathens, that's your Christmas celebration goodbye. All right? You might not be able to afford that turkey, man. You might not be able to afford those presents this year. All right? He added that the gas price will remain volatile and I'd expect a sharp move up. So like this, upward movement in price, right? Tomorrow towards record 700 to 800p a term high or firm, right? However, the key and worrying point is that is that this is in the middle of summer. When was this article? Uh, okay, just yesterday. All right. We're, we're, we're heading into autumn now anyway. All right, summertime is gone. Um, where was I? However, the key and worrying point is that this is in the middle of summer. Prices could move higher as demand increases. <clears throat> excuse me. For heating into winter you know and, and you know it could be a very cold winter man all right and people are gonna have to you know use the gas turn the heating on and stuff to keep the house warm well you better you know all these uh, um all these people love drip right well hey <laughs> that canada goose that you spent a thousand pounds on that better, that better keep you warm man that montclair jacket because that's all you're gonna have man all right, the, the energy prices are going to be far too high to be leaving the, the, the heating on all evening or throughout the night, you see. And let, let's see what the weather is. Let's see if we can get the weather for um the rest of the year. Let's just see weather forecast. Rest of the year. Let's just see, man. Uh, Long range weather forecast. Let's have a look here. Yeah, there, man. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm just scrolling through. All right, so we've got some some quite cold weather here, in November. All right, All right, and uh, some some winds as well, which adds to the cold, which makes it feel even colder as well. All right. Um, you know, December here we've got one degrees. Okay, four degrees, two degrees, you see. But you know, ultimately, hey, this is your how about Shimya Shai we're talking about. So you can make it even colder than this, right? But you know, this is still cold as it is. And for you not to be able to have your um, your, your, your energy, your, you know, your gas, because it's too expensive and you just have to dwell in a freezing cold house. All right? it's, it's not going to be easy, man. It's not going to be easy. And, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is in control regardless. So it doesn't matter what the weather forecast say. The Heavenly Father, he can he can turn down that dial, man, and make it even colder. Okay? So we are living in that time, man. You know, there's no denying. And look, it's 1044. Kahalayim La, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Yahweh Lord willing, we make it as part of that hopeful elect. And, you know, you, you, 
I just realized I'm only sharing the window, so you might not actually be able to see the bottom half of my screen. But maybe you can see it now. It's 10.44, man. All right, so Lord willing, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has mercy on us in these trying times, man. Because we are we are living in the last days. All right. Um so I'm just reading in some in this article. Okay, I think I'm pretty much done with the article. The point has been made. Um, you know, where was that video I was watching as well? Life will come to a stop. UK facing a bleak winter, man. All right. And um, look, look at this one. America, Fox News, Tucker Carlson. Things are falling apart very quickly. I'm going to watch that as well, actually. See what's happening there. I'll, I'll leave the link to that one as well. I haven't actually watched this video. But I'm going to watch it, you know. Uh, Russia cuts off gas exports to Europe, blames Western's sanctions for delay. All right, so these sanctions backfired, man. All right, we are living in that time. Russia shuts Nord Stream one gas pipeline to europe which we were just reading about which of course is going to drive the energy prices up all right what's this well that war yep we're living in that time wars on rumors of wars UK media desperate to portray heat wave as end of the world. Well, we're living in those times now, man. Whether you want to make a joke out of it and, you know, you want to uh, lighten the blow, right? These these things are happening, man. Russia shuts Nord Stream 1 pipeline. Putin in chokes um, Europe's gas supply. Okay. Um, look at this comment here. When food is abundant, is abundant and cheap, they can't control you. When en when energy is abundant and cheap, they can't control you. Scarcity equals dependency and control. And that's ultimately what these elites want, man. They want full control over the population. Remember, ultimately, they're trying to bring forth what? That new world order, man. You see? They're trying to bring forth that new world order. Having the people completely dependent on them, man. All right, because Esau has a godlike complex and he, you know, he genuinely believes he's God. All right. But this, this is really going down, man. You see, this is really going down. Yet two thirds of our people are still in that, uh, in that folly spirit, man. In which now I want to start off right there. Let's get that real quick. Bring up these precepts. Ecclesiastes 7 and 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. All right, so you don't want to be in that two third spirit, man, living your best life. Ignorance is bliss. Let me just enjoy my time whilst I can, all right? Just ignore everything that's happening around me, man. Because these things, you know, these plagues are going to hit them when they least expect it, man. You know, they're, they're reporting about this on the news. You've got the prophets out there warning you from the things to come. You know, in um, Ezekiel 3 and 17, the Lord says, give them warning from me. We're giving the people warning from our Lord, man. Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. And they still don't want to hearken, man. They still want to do their own thing. Okay. Verse 3. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Because we that believe in this word, we are suffering right now, man. 
you know, we have uh, the whole world coming up against us. We're, we're, we're at the bottom of the barrel in society. We're laughed at. We're mocked. We're scoffed. You know, um, we're, we're pressed in many different ways, fighting off all sorts of demons, all right? Fighting to stay in the spirit, you know? We're suffering right now, but ultimately, you know, um, as it says, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The mind is made better, all right? Because we have this understanding. Isaiah 33 and 6 says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, right? So, you know, although we're, we're going through a time of difficulty now, we know it's going to pay off, man. And ultimately, you know, those that don't believe in this word, they're going to be in, in, in a worse situation than, than we are, man. You know, so we'd rather suffer now so that we can, um, you know, so that we can rejoice in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushad when that salvation comes. All right. But two thirds of our people are in that spirit of laugh now, cry later, man. But they're going to be crying bitterly, man. Worse than they could ever imagine, you see. So, you know, now is not the time for, 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 for messing around, man. All right. Verse four. Um, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. You know, mirth is, is that, you know, living your best life spirit. You know, do what the hell you want. You know, let, let's even let's get the definition for mirth here. Let's see what it says in the letter. Here you go. Joy, mirth, gladness, gaiety, pleasure. All right, that's 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 how two thirds of our people are dwelling right now. Then that spirit of mirth, man. The you know, pleasure, ignorance is bliss. Not giving a care about the prophecies man you know no no do they want to you know they don't want to um what's the word they don't want to seek the lord man why he may be found you see they don't want to seek the lord they think they got it all figured out you know they they're blinded by the uh deceitfulness of riches you see which is um choked the word out of them as you can read about in Matthew chapter 13 is even somewhere in Luke, I think maybe Luke 4 and 19. I may be mistaken with that one, but definitely Matthew chapter 13, right? Um, let's go over here to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. And it reads, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And that's two thirds of our people, man. That's Jake, you know. Then that, they, as I said, then that live in their best life spirit. They don't want to seek the Lord. They don't want to repent, you know, because, you know, uh, for, for, for most of our people, this word sounds sweet. You know, you hear you're an Israelite, you're son of the Most High, you're, you, you know, you're gods, you know, pursuing to Psalms 82 and 6. And, um, you know, you're going to have the the, the, the the heathens as slaves and things of that nature, man. But then you hear something like, oh, the Day of Atonement, we have to fast. We have to have a dry fast for 24 hours, no food, no water. And then you're offended. You're like, nah, you know what? Um, I, I, I don't want to be an Israelite no more, man. I want to go eat my McDonald's. I want to go to Wendy's. I want to go to Wingstop. All right. I want to eat my TGI Fridays. And then you become offended, man. But, but you see, that's because you're simple. You don't see the bigger picture, man. And we, we are in this wicked flesh. And as long as we are in this wicked flesh, we are subject to sin, man. So, you know, if the Lord has given us a day, an appointed day, where, you know, we could uh, atone for those sins by way of dry fasting, why the hell wouldn't you want to do that, man? Don't you know that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is the one bringing the plagues upon the earth? Don't you know that this world is going to be in a state of severe mourning, man? Can't you see what's going on around the world? You know, this this what well, hey, that famine is gonna hit. All right, you ain't gonna be able to to heat up the house for those little children that you have, man. All for yourself. All right, you ain't gonna be able to afford the energy prices coming, and you still don't want to seek your power, man. Once again, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? 
and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. All right, you you two thirds, man, you hate knowledge, man. You hate when this word is being presented unto you. Why? Because of the demons that are dwelling within you. All right, they 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 don't want you to hear this word, man. And, you know, you can see the look on some of their faces when you bring out this word. And, the, the, you know, they, they have this real resentful look. Of, nah, 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 I don't want to hear that. Nah, you know. Well, they just don't hear it at all, man. You see, but that's to your own demise. All right. We are doing our job as the watchmen. Whether you hear or forbear, man, we have done our job. So when the Lord comes and brings that, pl brings those plagues, brings that judgment, we don't, we're, we're not going to have your blood on our hands, man, because we've done what we needed to do. It's up to you whether you will hear or forbear, man. All right. We have no control over that. Ultimately, that's in the hands of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh All right. Uh, Proverbs 1 and 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit onto you. I will make my words known. I will make my I will make known my words unto you. And that is what the Heavenly Father is doing, man. He's making his words known on, unto the people. By what? By his men, his servants, the prophets, man. You know, we can just prove that with one of many scriptures, but I love how it's uh written here in Second Ezra 15. And one, all right, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. All right, so these ain't our words that we're speaking, man. These are the words of the Lord being presented unto you, man. The Heavenly Father has always spoken through his men, his prophets. All right, think about Moses, for example, think about Samuel. For example, man, or even when um, King David committed that great sin of adultery, didn't he speak to, uh, didn't the Lord speak to King David via the prophet Nathan? So the Lord has always spoken through men, okay? And it's up to you whether you hear or forbear, right? Verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity, which means the unbelief of them, trouble thee that speak against thee. So really and truly, hey man, you, you, once we preach this word unto you, it's up to you whether you want to receive it, man. All right. But ultimately, we've done our job. All right. We brought this word unto you and, 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 you know, what you decide to do with it is down to you, man. All right. Because guess what? Verse four. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So you're going to die in your unbelief. You're going to die in your unfaithfulness, man. Point blank period. There's no way around it. You will die in your unfaithfulness. All right. Let's, let's end it here at verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. All right. Look. Life will come to a stop. UK facing a bleak winter. Things are falling apart very quickly. Russia cuts off gas exports to Europe. Okay. Um, world at war. Okay. All these different things, man. These are um, these are the plagues of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Just like in the time of Egypt, man. Of ancient Egypt, you know, Mizraim. The Heavenly Father, he brought forth those plagues, man. And he kept hardening Pharaoh's heart. Okay. So verse 5, 2nd Ezra 15 and 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. All right. All of this, you know, these energy prices increasing, that, that is causing destruction. When you have no... Uh, uh, you can't afford to pay the energy bills and you're freezing to death, right? That's going to cause that death. We have all the droughts going on across the four corners of the earth, right? 
And um, uh, what's that going to lead to? That's going to lead to a famine. All right. What's your modern day sword? The gun or any killing instrument, man. And look, these these um, these jakes are, 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 you know, they're reaching the spirit world fast, man. It was just yesterday we had a UK rapper here. Uh, well, he, he was more of a, you know, more of a, you know, a gang banging nigga than a rapper by the name of Emlo, right? He got shot dead yesterday, man. So these are the plagues that Yahweh by Shumya Shah is bringing forth, man. And regarding that famine, I spoke about in my video yesterday, um, you know, the, the waters reached a, 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 such a low level in Germany. And one of the stones had written on it, if you see me uh, uh, weep bitterly or something along those lines. And you know what? Let me just try and see if I can find that video uh, that I watched now. Uh, let, me, let me try and see if I can find it. And I'll play it for you real quick. All right, no, it says it's uh, I believe it was on this brother's channel here. Okay. Uh, and you know, go subscribe to this brother, man. Very edifying uh, lessons, man. Uh, damn, what video is it? Okay, I think it was this one here. Let's check it out. I'm just going to play that bit to you, you know, but you can watch this video. Ah, in your own time. Let me try and find it. No, Lord willing, this video is edifying, man. All right. Let me try and find this part. Oh, yeah. You see, these they're hiding in the caves, man. Because China is experiencing... Uh, it's most severe heat wave, man. All right, so they're hiding in the caves right now. Uh, look what's happening to the trees due to the heat. This is why you need to fear the Lord, man. You need to fear Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. As Israelites, we're blessed, man. This is our power. All right? And, and you know, our people still want to take it for granted, man. All right? Well, the same must know it through death by pain, right? Sorry, bear with me. If I oh one second, let me let me find it and uh, I'll resume. Okay, for what do you how about Shumi Asha? I found it. All right, and um, you know this TikTok, right? Um, I just got a notification saying things are about to change about here in these last days, which is true, man. We're living in these last days now, man. Israel needs to fucking wake up, man. Because the Lord ain't playing, man. Look, this this guy, I think is a heathen, but he even said, you know, he, he put the title up here saying, God is speaking through these events, man. We just read that in 2nd Ezra 15 and 5, right? Destruction. All right? We, we just read that, man, but you people still don't want to listen. So you don't want to hearken unto the word of the Lord, man. But anyways... Cause I'm getting hot now. Let me just play this video, all right? And um, let's just back it up a bit. Yeah. Let's play it from about here. But yes, the Heavenly Father, He's speaking through these events, indeed. All right, anyway, let's uh, let's watch it.
You hear that? Did you hear that? Let's let's listen to that again, man. Hunger stones in Germany. The, the water's reached a whole low level, man. A whole another level of low, right? Um, let's let's listen to that one more time. If you see me weep, why? Because that famine is coming, man. As it is written, behold, Second Edges fifteen and five. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world: the sword, famine, death, and destruction. But you people still don't want to hearken, man. Well, you know, if you want to, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. But if that's what you want to do, if that's what you want your lot to be, then be my guest, man. But I know I certainly wouldn't want to, man. Okay. Um, Proverbs 1 and 24. Because I have called and ye refused. Hold on, my screen just went off, so lucky. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded, but ye have set out no all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. And this is the spirit that the Heavenly Father is going to put on his elect during those times, man. Why? Because we are suffering now. The elect of Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai are suffering right now, man. We are suffering for righteousness sake. Whilst, you know, all you wicked people are, 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 are you know, you're, you're, you're living your best life. You're, you're in that mirth spirit. All right, but there's going to be a time where the tables are going to turn, man. And we, the Heavenly Father is going to put the Spirit on his men to be laughing at you and mocking when your fear cometh. And why are we going to be doing that? Because we warned you, to, we warned you people of these times to come, man. And you didn't take it seriously, right? You thought that, oh, you know, um, that, that, that book is written 2,000 years ago, man. That's one thing my cousin actually told me all the time, man. But, you know, oh, why would I believe a book that was written almost 2,000 years ago, man? What, what validity does it have today? All right? He doesn't know that this is the script. The scriptures, man. This is the script of life. The Bible speaks about the past, the, 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 the present, and the future, man. All in one book. All right? A book of books. You see? Verse 27. When your fear cometh as desolation... And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, man. So the Heavenly Father, he's going to turn his face away from you unbelieving, unrepenting Israelites, man. And he's going to leave you to dwell in those torments, right? Let's scroll down to verse 26 in Second Ezra 15, right? For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them. Sorry, my, my screen just blacked out again. You might not be able to see it. But anyways, it's back now. And therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction, man. These words are faithful and true. As it says in the beginning of this chapter, man. Verse 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. Okay. The whole earth. And ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against them, man, nor was you willing to repent. Okay? So the Heavenly Father, He's going to bring forth these plagues, He's going to bring forth these judgments, and He's going to leave you in it, man. He's going to leave you in it, man. He's not going to save you. You're going to try, and, oh, what, what was those names that those Israelites were teaching? Oh, yeah! Yeah, you have a shot! Help me! Help me, have a shot! And he ain't going to hear you, man. He's going to leave you in them, man. Because ye have sinned against him. All right? Proverbs 1 and 28, you see? Then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. All right? 
They didn't choose the fear of the Lord. So therefore, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is going to leave them to dwell in those plagues, man. What does it say? Let's go, let's scroll up to verse 7 real quick. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions, right? You fools despise wisdom and instruction. You want to learn the ways of wickedness, but you don't want to learn the ways of righteousness, which could potentially save your soul, man. All right. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 5, and we'll start at verse 17, and it reads, Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High correcteth. Therefore, despise not the chastening of the Almighty. You know, the hopeful elect are being chastened by the Heavenly Father right now. You know, as many of us have had to give up careers, man. Certain careers, certain uh, uh, big opportunities here on this earth. All right. Th um, there's a brother out there in Colombia. You know, he's from the tribe of Asha. You know, he did a, a nice video of him out there on the highways and the byways, you know, bringing out the scriptures in Spanish. And, you know, I'm hearing that he was meant to be, um, he gave up being a professional football player, man. All right. He gave that up so that he can suffer the afflictions of the Lord, man, with the chance that Lord willing, he'll be saved. OK. You know, we go through certain situations, might not get that particular job, might not have as much money as we want. All right. You know, uh, might not look the way that we want. All, all sorts of different things. You know, your, your, your woman uh, being a demon. Family members coming up against you. All sorts of different things, man. This is the chastening of the Heavenly Father. All right? But guess what? Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High correcteth. Because you see, um, people think that, oh, when the Heavenly Father is dealing with you, on this side right now, you're, you're, you're going to live that abundant lifestyle. And, you know, you're going to be, everything is going to be all good. Everything's going to be crisp, calm, easy, right? But it's the opposite, man, because we're waiting for the reward. Our reward is not here on this side, man. Our reward is in heaven, all right, which is, which is around the corner, man. Romans 13 and 11, for our salvation is nearer than when we believe, right? You see? So really and truly, you know the Lord is dealing with you when you're going through all these various different forms of suffering, man. Why? Because uh, what did it say here in Ecclesiastes 7? And uh, verse 3, sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better, the mind is made better. So the Heavenly Father, He's working on our minds so that we, we will be, He's hardening us so that we would be able to um, um, face all the different sufferings that we are going to have to witness with our own two eyes, man. Because we're getting ready to see you know, dead bodies piled up on the streets, people dying of famines, spirits being, you know, created for vengeance, going buck wild, these animals going crazy, right? All this judgment coming upon the earth. This is why the Lord is hardening our hearts, man. You know, it's for a reason. I remember at one point in my house, you know, the members of my household were saying, look, man, you need to lighten up. You know, you don't need to be so hard all the time and so like, like, like cold and, you know, but I'm telling them, well, I, you, you guys don't understand the things that are about to take place here on the earth, man. And you guys don't want to repent. You don't want to seek the Lord. So I have to, you know, deal with the, the fact, the idea that you, you may not make it, man. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to make it, Lord willing. I make it a part of the hope for elect, but I'm doing things to the best of my ability to ensure my salvation, right? But these members of my household, they ain't doing that, man. So I have to harden myself to understand the fact that you guys might not make it, man. And I'm going to have to deal with that reality. You see? So, you know, once again, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Okay? He's preparing us for that great time of tribulation, man. Okay? Verse 18, Job 5 and 18. For he maketh sore and bindeth up, he woundeth and his hands make whole. 
So not only does he he, he make us sore and bind us up, he wounds and he, 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 he makes us whole again, man. You know, it's just like when you're building a, a house, you know, sometimes you have to knock down that old bit of house or whatever was there previously in order for you to bring the new. That's what the Heavenly Father is doing with his elect. All right. Job 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yeah. In seven, there shall no evil touch thee. All right. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Right. Isaiah 54 and 17. Job 5 and 20. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. So we're not fearing the energy bills going up. We're not fearing that this could be a very bleak, dark winter. We're not fearing the famines to come, right? Because the Heavenly Father, he's going to feed us, man. That's the faith that we need to have. You know, let, let's quickly bring that out. Because at the end of the day, we need to build each other's faith, man. That's what it means to edify, to build. Right? Let me just check I'm actually recording. Yeah, I am. Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink. Sorry, my screen just blacked out. My servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. All of you who are unrepenting, all you Israelites who didn't want to turn back to the Lord, who mocked and scoffed at the prophets, right? You're going to be ashamed, man. All right. Verse 14. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for, vex for vexation of spirit. All right. So two thirds of our people are going to be howling for vexation of spirit, man. When they're dwelling in the torments that the Heavenly Father is going to bring forth, they're going to wish that they repented, man. They're going to wish that they sought the Lord whilst he may be found. All right. They're going to wish that they turn back to their power, man. But by then, it's going to be too late for a lot of these people, right? Job 5 and 22, at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. You see, so this is why the Heavenly Father has got us going through suffering now. So that we can be hardened for the times to come. Because imagine what sort of spirit you're going to have on you to laugh at destruction and famine, man. You're going to have a heavy spirit on you, man. Heavy spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. And that full confidence, man. You see? Verse 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. So even these, you know, we have these spirits created for vengeance, teeth of wild beasts, so on and so forth. They ain't going to harm us, man. Lord willing, we get that spiritual power. We might even be setting these beasts of the field on these wicked people, man. It's going to be a great time for those that stood stiffly for the names of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahashah, man. It's going to be a great time for us, man. Okay, let's go over here to the book of Psalms, chapter 2, and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? This new world order, man, that's very vain. Right? They think that they're, they're going to be ruling perpetually. They can further enslave humanity. All right. Verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. From us. So they want to weaken us, man. Ultimately, they, they want to make a, a, a perpetual end to us. You see? Verse 4, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Who is that? Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. The Lord shall have them in derision. All right. Doesn't it say in Job 20 or, or, or 22? 
one of them that in the fullness of his sufficiency he shall be in straits meaning a time of difficulty all right verse 5 psalms 2 and 5 therefore shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure all right so the heavenly father he well he's speaking unto them now man by way of these these plagues going forth Look at look at the, the droughts, the flooding in Pakistan, which has, you know, affected the lives of 50 million people, man. 50 million people have been affected by the floods in Pakistan. And who brought it? The Heavenly Father, man. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Amos 3 and 6, right? Psalms chapter 2 and 6, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. All right. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Verse 7, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking about, man. And um, verse 8, ask of me, and I shall give thee. Oh, the screen just blacked out again. One second. So what up? And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. This is the, the you know, was promised unto uh, um, 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 the Israelites, man, starting with the elect. Verse 9, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. That's what we're going to be doing to these heathens, man. We have to serve that brutal captivity, or well, so are they. All right, we're going to recompense onto them double, man. Thus saith the scriptures. Psalms chapter 2 and 10. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. All right, the Israelites, starting with the elect. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. And rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So we're living in a time where we're gonna trust, we're going to have no choice but to trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We're gonna have to bring forth that 144% faith, man. It says without faith. It is impossible to please him, man. What's that? Hebrews. That's in the book of Hebrews. Uh, I think chapter 11. All right. And verse 6. You see? So this is the times that we're heading into, man. It's all coming down to the wire. That's why Sirach 5 and 7. Make no tarrying. Don't delay to turn to the Lord. And put not off from day to day. Like two thirds of our people are doing, right? For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance, man. So these people are going to perish in their so called security, man. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, right? That's what's going to happen. Okay? Let's close out here in 2nd Ezra chapter 16. And we'll start at verse 35. And it reads, Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. Because the word, behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Don't believe in Allah, Buddha, Jesus Christ, and Santa Maria, whoever, man. Believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the true powers of heaven and earth, right? Verse 37, behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. And we're seeing that, man. We just seen a few examples in this very video, right? The plagues are drawing nigh and are not slack, all right? As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, with two or three hours of her birth, great pains, come past her womb, her womb which pains when the child cometh forth they slack 
not a moment. Right? The Lord speaking in similitudes. You can read about that in, in Hosea 12 and 10. Even so, not even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. O oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims on the, upon the earth. All right. So you see, we we we're living in a time where we're not gonna have no certain dwelling place, man. We're just gonna have to be led through the Spirit, trusting in the Lord with all thine heart, and leaning not unto thine own understanding, pursuing to Proverbs three and five, man. All right, because we're heading into a time like never before. And that's why it's important, bringing it back to this day of atonement, that we atone for our sins, man. We don't know what we've done in our past lives. We don't know what we're doing in our present life, where, you know, certain things we might be doing, you might not even be aware, you might not be conscious that it's a sin unto the Lord, man. All right, so it's important that we atone for our sins today, man. All right, let's just close that here. Yeah, end of the chapter. You know what? Let's start. I want to start a bit further up now. Second Ezra 16 and 62. And we're pretty much going to just read on down, right? And um, yeah. And the Spirit of Almighty God, which made all things. And searcheth out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. So they don't know hiding your sins to the heavenly father because he beholds all, right? Therefore, have the Lord searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, Ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Because you're going to be judged according to your works, right? So some will be judged more than others. Okay? Verse 66, what will you do? Or how will ye hide your sins before the Most High and his angels? Right? Verse 67, behold, the Most High himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. To meddle no more with them forever, so shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. And that's what we're hoping for, that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai will, will, will deliver us from all troubles, man. So we're leaving off from our sins. We're atoning for our sins today, especially, right? Verse 68, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is king is kindled over you all right those that, that uh, believe in the names of the lord yahweh bashim yahweh shai and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot right so no matter what we go through we need to remain faithful to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Because at the end of the day, we need to understand that they are in control of all things, man. So don't fold. Don't fold, man. Even if it means you have to lose your life for this faith, don't fold, man. All right? Otherwise, you're going to be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot, man. Okay? Verse 70, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. All right, so we're always constantly going to be tried, man. The Heavenly Father is going to keep testing us right until the point where he delivers us, man. All right? But we need to have that faith. 
the 144% faith, right? Verse 74, Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Yahweh. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let, your, let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. All right? It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. And we don't want to be cast into that fire, man. All right? We want to we want to be glorified along with the appearance of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. All right? First John 3 and 2. You see? So it's going to be a very painful time for those unbelievers, man. Those that didn't believe on this truth. Right? But we need to stay in the spirit regardless, man, because the days of evil are at hand. Okay? So hopefully this lesson was edifying. And until the next time, I say Shalom.